Hi, Travis. Hi, Henrik. Welcome to Solis. We're here at the booth at Intersolar 2025, showing off our new hybrid. Voila. Yeah, voila. It's a 125 <laughs> hybrid. And again, 125. Yes. You hear it right. It's a really big unit. We can then, with, with this one, we could have 250% or 250 kVH on the roof. That means that we could charge or we could have a system that could charge a battery with 125k and you could also support the grid with 125 at the same time. That's right. Why don't you go around and show the connections? Yes. On the side here, we have the AC port on the top. You have the generator port or smart load port. Many names for this one. Here you have the backup port, which will support backup critical loads for when you have power outages, which we had in Spain the other week. And okay. I know Travis was there, so he knows all about it. Beside those, you have the DC port for the battery. Each port has 100 amps per port. That means that you have 125K you can charge your battery with. You could either choose to have a battery for each port, or you could have one battery for both. That means that you need to set up the system with a single BMS dual DC. Beside those, you have the uh, MPPTs. We have 10 of them. Each have two strings. Each of the strings have 21 amps. So that they will support the new big panels that we see. You have two DC switches. Beside there, you have the communication ports where you have two RS485. One for the communication with other units and one for the EMS companies that want to support us or Great. control the units. And then you have the data logger, which everyone knows, S2, VL, SD, supports either Wi-Fi or LAN. You could also use the 4G unit for that if you want to. So, Henrik, why don't you tell us the story of how this came to be? Yeah. Two years ago, we released the 50K. The first thing we got asked, why didn't you do a bigger one? So we listened and did this one first as a hundred as a test project. But after we heard that, or we know that the auxiliary services in Sweden or the Nordics will have bigger units, we increased the power by 25 K. So this one will then support as one standalone unit for auxiliary services. You don't need to be a part of the many units. You get better revenue and it will then get all the power you need okay great now a lot of our customers they want to know exactly like what scenario would we use the 125k also it can parallel so up to 750 kilowatts yeah. of charge discharge and backup yeah. so tell me more about the applications because really yeah. that's your that, you're a specialist in that yeah. so tell us about that so we see farms we see uh data centers or service centers where you have uh, critical loads that need power. Uh, we see water purifying st or stations, again, for water that needs to be purified. Uh, so if you have a power outage, which we had in Spain the other week, the critical loads need power. So if a, the, if a server goes down, it takes at least a couple of hours to get it up and running again. And that is not good for business. If you have a farm with uh, either chickens or pigs or whatever, and they have ventilation that needs to run, if the power disappears from that, the, the animals will die. So again, right. critical loads are what we see one of the applications. And Another, we just saw in Spain, right, what happened? Yeah. I mean, I was there in Barcelona, power went out. I was with my mom and didn't know how to get home because the whole power went out. And this is this is going to change. This could help change the market, yeah. to stabilize the market also. Yeah. And talking about stability, ancillary services, yeah. tell us more about that, that so, market. In uh, the Nordics, we have, uh, or the frequency of the grid needs to be at 50 hertz. That is kind of pre predefined by all the grid companies around Europe. Other, comp or other regions have a different one, but at least we have 50. And this can't go above 50 or below 50, more than 0 0.1. If that happens, we need to either discharge or take power from the grid or add power to the grid to support it. And with auxiliary services, you get... You do, just do it for a pretty short while, like FCR, FFR. Uh, we support FCR with this one. We'll kick in a big amount of, say, 125K for a couple of seconds. That will stabilize the grid, or we will discharge the grid 
with 125k. So we'll stabilize. And seeing that this is above 104k, this will um, or this was qualified as one unit, and you will get better rebate. Great, great. Now we've been kind of marketing a lot about a four-in-one solution. Yep. Now I really want to explain that. Can you help yep. me with that, please? Okay. We have a PCS, which controls the battery. Wait, wait what's the PCS? Power control system. Yeah, but what does it do? It means that either you, when you have excess energy from the roof, the 250K I talked about, you charge your battery with 125. A so DC, it's, DC it's the battery yeah. charging yeah. conversion system. And the other system. one then goes out to the I get grid. it, okay. And then you have the backup port, which is the other one, right. which we again have That's talked the about. That's off-grid. Yeah, off-grid thing. And talking about off-grid, you could actually run this off grid. Yeah, you can uh, run it without, off without grid. any grid. So if right. you are a prepper that lives in the hills or in the outbush of um, South Africa, this will be your unit. Exactly. And then the PV side? The PV side has two DC port uh, switches, five MPPTs on each. So that's one. Yeah. And then the last one, the EMS. Uh, the EMS comp or EMS support. That means that we can then optimize the usage of the power we have available. Right. So Again, as I said, 150 to the battery. So the EMS is controlling all of those All seconds. of the things, yeah. Right, and that's built in. That's built in. Now, the next thing is really important in Europe is yeah. Nordpool, dynamic yeah. pricing. So can you tell us more about Nordpool? So Nordpool is a system that the day ahead tells us which prices you have in the different regions. And again, like if you have, and that takes into account the weather, if you have a lot of water power or you have a lot of wind, the prices goes down. If you have, you know that you're not going to have enough wind or not enough water, the prices will go up, go up and power will be more expensive. So the North Pole we use into our AI or peak value arbitrage system that uh, Jordan talked about yesterday. But in short, you will sell when the price is high, get paid, and you will then buy when the price is low or minus. Kind of digging like after Bitcoin. I think it's great because yeah. you know the prices ahead of time. Yeah. You know what it's going to, and you can just prepare for that ahead yes. of time. I have actually a case in Sweden, a friend of mine that has uh, 25 at home. So he sat at home, waited till the price hit the target, and he sold and he earned 250 crowns wow. in five minutes. Wow. Doing the discharge. Yeah, I talked to a guy from Lithuania today, and he said the pricing can swing from zero all the way up to 800 euros yeah. per megawatt hour. Yeah. That's just crazy to me. Yeah, it's wild. All right. I heard this has unbalanced. Can you yeah, talk about that? Yeah, unbalanced is a really nice feature we have. The unbalanced means that we have three phases, of course. So L1 has 25, L3 has 30, and L2 has uh, 20. Normal systems will then support the way that if you have overload or overproduction you will then on the one you have 30 you will buy five from the grid on the one you have 20 you will export five to the grid that means that you will pay both tax and uh, anything else from the grid company for both buying and selling at the same time we eliminate that so we balance it out so you have zero either export or import at the same time so that also sounds like it's helped stabilizing the grid too, right? Of course it will. Right, because you're not injecting more on no. one phase no. and then buying more on another phase, which is terrible for the grid to be able to manage. Yeah, So that's the, again the reason why, in the, at least in the Nordics, we don't allow single-phase inverters because that will give you an un unbalanced grid. Right. Now I want to go next to the generator. Can you explain a little yeah. bit? Like I know our old inverters, they were just plug in the generator and let it run when yeah. the grid is off. But I know this has more features. Can you yeah. talk more about that? So we support generators with a, uh, something called a smart controller. That means that we send an auxiliary signal to a smart controller that starts or shuts off the generator. And the way the generator works is that when the battery hits the predefined SOC level, say 40%, the generator then will kick in. And this is in off or backup mode, only in backup. We don't use this when we don't have backup. So then it charges the battery up until an SOC level that is also predefined, let's say 80. Right. Then it shuts off the generator. 
but at the same time as charging the battery, it also supports the backup load. So you oh, need okay. to have a generator that is at least the same size as the, the inverter, or at least 1.2 above. So your generator is not always on. No. So you're in, in that sense, you're being even more greener. I know yeah. you don't want to use a generator, yeah. but it's kind of like a secondary backup, yeah. right? So, so it's a better greener solution it's overall. It's better greener. It's uh, less noise, less uh, emissions, and so forth. Yes. Yeah. And I know that you've installed many 50k hybrids. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us how you think you see this being installed across Europe? Like as far as mounting it to the wall or to the battery or on the floor? I don't know. Tell me. Depending on depending on how the PV PV array is installed. Say it's a rooftop installation. You don't want to pull DC down to the ground. You put this on the wall, on the roof, and then you may have a battery solution on the back side of the wall, rack systems. Or you could put it on the side of a big battery, say 250 kVh from any brand you find out there. And then you have this on the side of it, and then you take DC from the battery straight into this, and then you have AC also through that system. And that means that you have a smaller footprint, that is an easier installation. You could in pre-install it at your warehouse. Then when you came, come out on site, you just dump it in on site and then you're done. Amazing. So it sounds like it's more of a flexible version than the traditional cabinet. I would say so, yes. Yeah. You can do almost anything with this with this inverter in multiple situations. Yes, for so. sure. All right, that's all I have. It was really nice yeah. uh, discussing this with you. Can I guess you can close us out? Thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure. If you are here at Intersolar, please feel free to come by and talk to us.